So I seem to have found myself in a little legal argument over Twitter with a chain of stores here in the UK. We have a huge chain here called CEX. Now, technically it's pronounced sex, as it says in their adverts. Turn your old games into cash at sex. But this is the UK and that's just a little bit too vulgar for us, so we'll stick to calling it CEX. Now, I do think they're also now trading in the US as well, but my issue here is with the UK stores, as I can't really comment on what's going on outside of our shores. But I just want to state from the beginning that I do actually really like CEX. It's a second-hand electronics store that sells DVDs, CDs, games, tablets, computers, cameras, all sorts. But about a year or two ago, they also started selling retro video games. Now, when I say retro, they'd already been selling the likes of PlayStation 2, GameCube, etc. But they now also sell NES, Super Nintendo, PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, and all manner of games. And I really liked having a high street store that stocked retro games, as finding a dedicated retro gaming store here in the UK actually isn't very easy, and many of them are a bit overpriced. So I loved being able to pick up the odd GameCube, NES, or PSP game every now and then. Some of my filming equipment also comes from these stores. But they've started doing something that's really hit a nerve with me, and is also, well, let's face it, illegal. CEX has always been a bit hit and miss when it comes to game manuals. Sometimes you'll get one, sometimes you won't. So I would never order anything from the online store. I would always go into an actual brick and mortar store, as I can usually make sure that I'm getting a game boxed complete, as it were. However, they've recently started actually printing their own game covers and putting them on the shelves alongside the originals. Now, at first, I just assumed these were for display purposes or that the games were being sold as disc only and you actually took it away in a generic case. But it soon became apparent that this wasn't the case. Uh, no pun intended there. So much so that I walked into the Birmingham store over the Christmas period and about 90% of the GameCube stock was reprinted cases with no indication of which ones were real and which ones were reproduced. So I decided to go through the store snapping a few pictures and I was shocked at how bad the situation had gotten. For example, here's a copy of Super Smash Bros. Melee. On the right is an example of the original copy and on the left is a reproduced copy of the case. You may also know that they're being sold for the same price. Now, unless you knew what you were looking for, you may not have any idea whether this was an original case or not, as CEX do not clearly state on the cases whether they are reproductions. So in essence, they are taking copyrighted artwork and trademarked logos, printing them off on a laser or inkjet printer and placing them in a generic case before selling the game for full price. Now let me stress we are just talking about the game cases here, not the game software. The games are usually genuine, we're talking about the illegal reproduction of cases only. And also I should stress that while I just said that CEX don't put anything on their cases to distinguish whether or not the cases are real, they do somewhat get around this however. You wouldn't know unless you took the game case apart though. If you look at the two GameCube cases side by side, you can see that there are some differences, mainly in the quality of the printing and also the size of the holder for the disc. But unless you knew what a GameCube case looked like, you wouldn't have any idea until you pulled the sleeve out and found a stamp on the reverse side to state that the case sleeve had been reproduced, but also at the same time reassuring you that the game itself is genuine. But don't think for a second that that excuses infringement of copyright or trademark law. If you're going to sell a game that is disc only alongside one that is boxed complete and also have them be the same price, technically that's okay. I mean, it's a bit cheeky, but it's not illegal. But printing off your own labels using someone else's intellectual property so that you can normalise prices is illegal. You may say that supermarkets and game stores do this all the time. They put a generic case with some photocopied artwork on the shelves or for display purposes, but it's not the same thing. I went down to my local Asda and took a look at what they do, and they do indeed have plenty of game cases which have been either reproduced or they've used printed promotional artwork. But these are display purposes only. Once you take the case to the till and pay for it, you are handed an official copy and leave the reproduced version behind in the store. The same with game stores, like this copy of FIFA 11 that I bought from Game. They sell games that have no cases, but they either sell it in an unmarked case or make their own generic artwork, like this copy of Pock and Tournament in the Canterbury store. Yes, it has the same price tag on it, but at least you know what you're getting. If you go to GameStop in the US, they'll do the same thing. 
If either of these were what CEX were doing, then that would be fine, but it's not. It may not really be acceptable to sell disc-only games for the same price as Boxed Complete, but that part is not illegal. However, that is not the case. Again, no pun intended. When you buy one of these games in CEX, the customer walks out of the shop having bought the game and the fake case. I know this not because I bought one of these games, but because my mother-in-law bought a DVD without knowing that it too had a fake case. It was only when we got home and pulled the sleeve out to find that stamp. For all she knew, she'd bought a DVD with an official case, as CX do not put anything on the front of the artwork to let you know that this particular version does not have an original case. So she bought a fake case with her genuine DVD and had no idea. And anyone else going into that store to buy a GameCube game will probably end up buying a fake game case as well. But it's not just limited to that store, and it's not just limited to GameCube games either. There's fake Pokemon game cases sat next to real ones, both at full price. There's Xbox 360 games, and there's also DVDs as well, along with all sorts of other software. So obviously I had to reach out to CEX for comment on this matter, and to their credit they have actually responded. In actual fact they responded five times, albeit with the same cut and paste answer. They stated, we only print covers that have been damaged, but please be assured that all discs inside are authentic. Our printing of covers is not a copyright infringement as verified with trading standards. Now let's just break this down a little bit. We only print covers that have been damaged. First of all, that doesn't give anybody the right to print off copyrighted or trademarked materials and use them for their own monetary gain. I understand that with the nature of their business and with the way the stores are set up, you often end up with random discs in store or decent quality cases and manuals being stolen on a regular basis as they're just left out on the shelves. But that's not the customer's problem, nor is it an excuse for illegal practices. Couple that with the fact that some stores have told me they will actually accept loose games if the value of it is more than £4, and seeing as they don't sell loose games, at least in terms of discs and DS slash 3DS games anyway, then that means that they must be printing their own cases for these games, and in which case you are then artificially inflating the prices of those games. But that part is more speculative as I don't actually have any evidence of this, so for this part uh, I haven't actually included any of it in any report gathered for trading standards. Now, our printing of covers is not a copyright infringement as verified with trading standards. I'm not sure who they spoke to at trading standards, but I don't think anybody has sought permission from Nintendo, Ubisoft, Rockstar, or anyone else whose trademark is being used without their knowledge. So I'm not buying that bull for a second. I've gone to trading standards myself, which I'll get onto in a minute. Not only that, but there is already legal precedent for this. And I'd recommend watching the Gaming Historian video on this matter, but essentially, back in the 90s, Nintendo had attempted to stop Blockbuster Video from renting new games. As they couldn't really do that, they found a workaround when it was found that Blockbuster were photocopying game manuals, as they were getting fed up of people returning them either damaged or just not returning them at all. Take a look at this small section of the video. When Blockbuster rented a game, they would usually include the original manual. However, customers tended to lose them or forget to return them. So, Blockbuster would photocopy the original manual just in case. Nintendo claimed that photocopying their manuals was a violation of copyright law, and on August 4, 1989, filed a suit against Blockbuster Entertainment in federal court. Nintendo sought a preliminary injunction, asking Blockbuster to immediately cease photocopying Nintendo manuals. Blockbuster agreed and looked for alternatives. Nintendo never gave Blockbuster any permission to reproduce game manuals and stated in court, we're not in a position to be offering a solution to these people if they get a game back without a manual. Our intent is to protect our copyrights. Any of our materials that we can protect, we will protect. It's the same principle for game cases. CEX's excuse is that they only print covers that have been damaged is the same as Blockbuster's excuse that they were only reproducing game manuals as they've been damaged. The legal precedent may be in US law, but CEX are now expanding into the US anyway, so we can't have double standards here. Now all of this is before you realise that CEX do actually sell games at different prices depending on whether they are boxed or unboxed. This is mostly restricted to cartridge games, but you can go on their website right now and see games for sale as boxed and unboxed with different prices slapped on them. In fact they even had a third category called Mint. This is a bit of a different issue, as there's no consistent definition of what mint means. In some stores there are strict rules as to what a mint game can be, but in others there isn't. 
I decided to try this out by going to the Thurrock store because they had a boxed, unboxed and mint copy of The Lion King on the Mega Drive. The unboxed version was £10, the boxed version was £12 and the mint copy, which is this one, was for sale for £15. When I asked those that worked in the store what mint meant, they simply said that it meant that the original manual was included and that was it. But it's not just limited to cartridge games, because once again you can go into a store or online and find Wii games that have different prices for those that come in a DVD style case and those that come in a cardboard sleeve, like Wii Sports or Mario Kart Wii. And when I initially wrote this episode, I theorised that they could print off their own Wii Sports case and charge more for it than they could charge for a copy that came in an original cardboard sleeve, effectively making a disc-only game somehow more expensive than the cardboard sleeve equivalent, because they can print their own case and artificially inflate the price. Then I went to the Merry Hill store, and that's exactly what they were doing. In this instance, the price had gone up to £10 for a DVD-style case copy, regardless of whether it was reprinted or not. Only the cardboard sleeve equivalent was half the price, despite it being an original cover. To contrast this, I went to a similar store called That's Entertainment that's connected to Music Magpie, and generic box copies were being sold for £1.99, while CEX are printing off fake cases and charging £10 for it. So not only is CEX printing their own cases using copyrighted and trademarked materials, and then selling them as part of the full product, they're also not clearly stating which ones are reproduced, and they're going against practices that they do with other games by choosing to make the price of the case inclusive in some of the games and not in others, charging more for fake DVD-style cases than with real cardboard sleeves. And some of these games aren't cheap either. A copy of Twilight Princess on the GameCube is very collectible and pricey, which they are well aware of. And here it was in the Birmingham store with an inkjet printed case and a price tag of £45. The same it would have cost with an official case and, also if you are lucky, a manual. Now despite CEX's protests, this is not a legal practice, and since I directed them towards the Nintendo vs Blockbuster video case, they've gone quiet. Although interestingly, the International Intellectual Property Law Association has seemed to have taken an interest in this and started following me on Twitter. And for the final nail in the coffin, let's just take a look at one of the games that they've reproduced a case for, Mario Kart Double Dash. Have a little flick through the manual and you will find this. This booklet and other printed materials accompanying this game are protected by domestic and international intellectual property laws. CEX is in breach of those laws. F*** it, here it is again in Wind Waker. So I've now referred the case to Trading Standards, and after being bounced back and forth between them and the Intellectual Property Office, it now has a case number and will be investigated further, so hopefully we can shut this sh down. But to be honest, I doubt anything is going to be done, so all I can do at this point is warn you to be careful if you're going to buy anything from CEX, but at least rest assured that I've received a response that stated, we will refer this issue to trading standards as you have identified a potential breach of the consumer protection from unfair trading standards. Again, I don't know if this is going to go anywhere, but consider yourselves warned. Anyway, until next time guys, I'll see you later.